Welcome back to the lab, your place for tutorials, travel and inspiration. Today I will show you how to create this amazing camera tracking effect and how to plug multiple frames into it. Let's go. First very important message, I recorded this with a shutter speed of 400. So normally you shoot with the double of the frame rate. So normally when you shoot with 60 FPS you have a shutter speed from 125. In this case I had a shutter speed of 400. This is because we have less motion blur in our scene and this makes it way better for the tracking. So we are here in DaVinci and I've got here my clip where I just hold my camera and move around in my office and this is what we are gonna track. And here on the left side in the media pool I've got some screenshots from the monitors we will put into this camera tracking. So then just create a new fusion clip with your clip when you're happy with the grading and everything and then open it up in the fusion page. The first thing we're gonna do is of course the camera tracking. So select your media in, hit shift and spacebar, type in camera tracker, press enter. First here on the inspector on the tab track, we adjust some sliders to have a better tracking at the end. Here detection threshold, put it up to 2.4. Minimum feature separate down to 0.04. Bi-directional tracking, so it tracks back and forth um, the whole clip. And then you can select preview auto track location so you have all the markers uh, visible. With these settings, we click on auto track. And now it will track the whole scene back and forth. And you can see here all these little dots are some tracking points we need later. Once your tracking is finished, I go over here to camera and I just give the information that this was shot with a 60 millimeter vocal length. Then I go over to solve and then I click on solve. This will take maybe one or two minutes. Now DaVinci will solve and analyze all the tracking points and will tell you exactly which tracking points are good and which tracking points are not so good. When DaVinci is finished with the solve, you have here average solve error and we are at 4.3 pixels and we need to have that below 1 to have the optimal tracking. So go down here to maximum track error and just put this a little bit down. Don't go too much down because you will delete too much points for the tracking. So here at 0.145 should be good. Then delete the points and click on solve again. And now you see we are at 0.43 pixels. So this is perfect for our tracking. Then we go over here to export. Then here on 3D transform, we select the area we want to place our frames later. And for me, it worked the best when I select these right here on the keyboard. Maybe it will work when you select some trackers around here, but in my case, it works the best here. So I will do that again. So go here to unaligned then select these trackers right here when you hold down control or command you can select some points around here or deselect them then click here on set from selection so it will adjust here your trackers and click on aligned so these are the tracking points for our frames we want to track later on and then click on export now we get this whole node tree. We don't need the camera tracker anymore, so just deselect it and we drag it over here in case we need it for some adjustments. The ground plane is basically the, the, the ground plane from the tracking, but we don't need that. We don't put a ground into our scene. We also don't need the point cloud. These are all the, the tracking points. You can delete them as well. We only need the camera tracker, the merge and the camera render. So put them somewhere around here. And always put the merge 3D into your left viewer. So this is the overview of the whole scene. And you can exactly see what movement the camera is doing. So now we can put our frames into our scene. So the first thing I take is the screenshot from my laptop. And this is just a normal PNG and I can't connect it directly to the Merge 3D. So take here an image plane 3D so DaVinci knows, okay, this PNG should be in the 3D space now and then you can put it into the Merge 3D. You see we have our screenshot right here and it's perfectly tracked when I move around here 
the camera, you see it's always at the same place. So the tracking worked perfectly. Select your image plane. Right here you have transform and here you can transform the whole image like you want it to have in the scene. So take your time here and adjust it as good as you want it to have. Up here on translation you can select the position you want to have and down here on rotation you can rotate it so it fits in your 3D scene. Maybe somewhere around here. Then I will go here through the timeline and we'll check if it's perfectly tracked and if it fits from, from the size how I want it to have. But in my opinion this looks perfect like this. Then we go on to the next screen here. I have a screenshot from my timeline here and once again select the image plane so we are in the 3D space and connect it to the merge 3D. And here once again with the image plane selected, drag it over to the position you want it to have and adjust all the sliders until you're happy how it fits into your scene. You can really take your time here with the adjustments because the better you do it, the better it will look into your scene and always go through the timeline and check if everything looks good. And I just place them like they're coming out from, from the monitors, so they are a bit more in front, like a hologram. And then I select the last one. This is just my logo from YouTube. Image plane. Plug it into it. Drag it over here. And of course, adjust this one as well. So when you're happy with the placement, once again, go through your whole clip and check if everything sticks where it should be but in my opinion this looks very good like this and over here in the left viewer we have our merge 3d and it exactly looks like this in my office so i'm sitting here and here are my three monitors so with this you can double check it if everything is like in your real scene if you know what i mean so that's the placement for our screenshots and now I want to look them more like a hologram so I just put the image planes a bit more down here then I select here the middle one hit shift and space bar and I type in soft glow and this is just my personal favorite look how I make the, the hologram effect you can do it for sure as you want it to have but I will show you how I do it and what I think looks very good. So with the soft glow selected, I deselect red. So I have green, blue and the alpha channel selected. Then with the gain, I go down to one and with the glow size, I go up to 30. And here on the image plane, you can go to material and I put the opacity down to 0 0.7. And then with the soft glow selected, hit shift and spacebar and type in color corrector. And down here, I just put the gain a little bit up so it pops a bit more out. So this is the basic adjustment for the hologram effect. So I select these two with command or control C and command or control V. I copy them one and two times over here. Then I'll go here to the beginning where this one is visible. Then I deconnect it from the image plane and connect it to the soft glow and back to the image plane and the same thing over here like this so we have the adjustments the soft glow and the color correction on this image now we only need to go to the image plane material 0.7 so it's a bit more transparent and let's do the same thing with the other one 0.7 so these two are a bit more transparent and one last tip to get rid of this black bar here, we select this media in, hit shift and space bar, type in Luma here. And then I adjust the sliders how I want it to have somewhere around here. So we don't have this black bar. So when I turn it on and off, you see it's a big of a difference. And that's pretty much it. When you go through, just check everything if you're happy with all the adjustments. But like this, it should work very well in your scene. 
I will pin a comment down below where you can download this footage for free and practice one-to-one -one like I did it in this tutorial. With that said, have fun creating and see you in the next one.